Welcome everybody to TechSoup. This is our new member orientation and the time you get to ask Q&A. Um, a lot of times people join TechSoup and they click on one thing and they buy one thing, but they really never know what TechSoup is all about. So I'm excited that you're here and ask us anything you want to know. Nick is going to give you everything, the kitchen sink, everything. He's going to tell you everything you want to know. But if this is your first time here, let me show how you can engage today. And would you do me a favor? Go ahead and type in the chat room how long you've been a member. So you know you're on mute, right? But you're going to get the recording of this within 48 hours. So you'll be able to gain some more insights once you hear all the things that Nick has gone over today. And we have Shamira in the background and Kelly will be joining us as well. We're excited that you're here. If you need the closed caption, tap on that CC button here at the bottom of your screen. Oh, Michael's been here a year. Thank you. Welcome. And so we're doing this Welcome to Tech Soup new member orientation because we think it's something that you should know. And again, welcome on behalf of Tech Soup members. Nick, I'm going to turn this over to you. Great. Um, welcome, everybody, today. Thanks for joining our um, new member orientation and Q&A uh, for TechSoup. Um, just a, a quick thing before we get started. Um, if you want to ask a question, please go ahead and use that Q&A um, icon in your Zoom bar there, as you see. Um, and uh, after this webinar is finished, we will send via email to you a recording of the webinar, as Aretha was saying, um, and a, a copy of the deck that we're sharing as well. Um, and without further ado, welcome to TechSoup. Let's talk about what we can do for you. Um, today, as you've met already, Aretha is our webinar host. Uh, I'm Nick Finn, um, a director of marketing here at TechSoup. And then we have Shamira McNeil and Kelly Garrett, who both work directly with the nonprofits TechSoup serves on technology issues. Um, and uh, we're going to turn to the two of them towards the second half of this webinar, um, and they can introduce you a bit to our customer success program and our TechSoup client services. Um, before we get started, I want to knock a couple of buzzwords out of the way. Um, technology is incredibly quick in terms of the new words it throws in front of people and expects us to all understand. And sometimes lots of that vocabulary becomes part of what is our, in our daily work, but I don't want to assume that everybody thinks the same things mean the same thing. So I'm going to go over a couple of quick terms here. You will hear sometimes about digital transformation. That's just becoming a more tech savvy nonprofit. Really think of it that way. Like, how are you using technology to do a better job at your nonprofit? Civil society is another term that gets thrown out there. And really what it is, is it's the people who aren't the government. It's the people who work in organizations, nonprofits, NGOs, other organizations around the world who are working to make the world a better place. That is civil society. Um, and then people bandy the term cloud adoption around. It's almost old school now. Everybody uses the cloud in one way or another. We're using it right now. Um, and uh, so don't get overwhelmed by the notion of cloud adoption. It's really just using more modern web-based tools at your nonprofit. With that said, let's get to the fun stuff. Starting with what is TechSoup? We all probably have been asked in our work roles to give an elevator pitch on our nonprofit. And I have to tell you, I've been at TechSoup for over seven years now. And every time somebody asks me to give the elevator pitch on TechSoup, I remind them that the elevator sometimes needs to go up 36 floors and my elevator pitch may be a little bit longer. But TechSoup is, first of all, in the United States, a 501c3 nonprofit organization. We are not a for-profit company. And that's one of the first things that really sets us apart from a lot of other places where your nonprofit could get technology. TechSoup has a mission. Our mission is to support other nonprofits as they use technology. And we think that we can do an excellent job at that because we are a nonprofit ourselves. And because we're a nonprofit and because we have that mission, we can stay focused on you and making sure that you get what we can help you with and that then you can execute your mission, support your community, look after the people that you look after, and hopefully technology can be helpful to you in some way in doing that. 
We host a catalog of technology products and services, meaning that even though we're a 501c3, a nonprofit ourselves, when you go to the TechSoup site, you will see there are products there, but they are coming from a nonprofit and they are intended for you. But let's talk about what those products are. So first of all, we form partnerships with big tech companies and we negotiate with them and we try to help them understand what the needs of nonprofits are. We provide specialized pricing in our catalog for some of those products. Mm -hmm. That includes software and hardware. And then more and more, we also provide services to nonprofits because we know it's not enough to get a technology product. Once you have it, the question is, what do you do with it? How do you implement it? How do you make sure it's set up correctly in your systems? How do you educate your staff, your volunteers, or the consumer of your services to use that technology properly? We like to think about it holistically, not just take money, give product, there's the exchange and it ends there. Our, our feeling is much more that we have to support nonprofits in using the technology itself and in learning how it works. And to that regard, we also provide specifically courses and training opportunities to help nonprofit staff develop their technology skills and their expertise. Um, and that's a core part of TechSoup's mission. Again, going back to this notion at the top that we're a 501c3 and we really care about the communities that we serve and we try to go that extra mile. So at the very end of all of that, we are also a grant-based programming provider. Like most nonprofits, we accept and apply for grants that allow us to execute specific projects. And so once again, we understand what it means to be a nonprofit because like you, we have to rely on those grant-based programs to deliver our mission and to fund the organization. So let's do a deeper dive now into the catalog that I mentioned at the front here. You get to it very easily by just navigating to techsoup.org. And in the top navigation, you can see, I've circled it to, to call it out here, product catalog. And then if you scroll down the page a little bit, you'll see that CTA or that button, the orange button that says browse catalog. The catalog is one of the main things that we provide benefits to nonprofits with. Um, and there are a lot of offers in there and they uh, apply to nonprofits of all sizes from very, very small one person organizations to huge multi-billion dollar nonprofits that serve a global audience. We work with all of them. One of the major brands that we partner with in that catalog is Microsoft. Microsoft was a very, very early partner of TechSoup's going back over 20 years now. Um, and uh, it used to simply be that when Microsoft was providing Windows or Office on a CD-ROM, remember, you would get it on a CD, or if you're even older than that, a disc, and you would load it on your computer. And so we just moved every, you know, we moved those CD-ROMs and those discs to nonprofits at a reduced rate. But today, in the modern world of cloud adoption, most of that activity happens online right? You're downloading software directly from vendors. And so when you want to use Microsoft software in today's tech suit, probably what you're thinking about is called Microsoft 365 or Office 365 Enterprise. I'm just going to call it Microsoft 365 because that's what the branding is really about now. And Microsoft 365 is the online cloud version of the traditional Office tools that you think about using. Excel, Word, PowerPoint, Outlook, and many, many others, but those are the four that most people think of initially. And they're cloud-based, depending on the plan that you have. There's also versions where you can download that to your local computer. Um, but it is really the most secure and probably the best system for collaboration, especially in the modern world where we're a distributed workforce, everybody's working remotely in different locations. Um, and uh, so Microsoft 365 is the place where that work can happen. If you're a little more old school and you still want just the local computer version of Microsoft Office, we do have that. 
the code word to think about there is what's called on-premises, right? On-premises meaning it's local. There's not a cloud version of this. It's just on this one computer. Now, it's tempting to feel like that's all you need, but I do want to say that, again, it is the cloud-based version of these technologies that really are the most secure and best for collaboration. So we really urge nonprofits to go that cloud direction. Um, and the Windows full professional operating system, Windows 11, although we don't even call it that now, it's just Windows, um, that's also available through TechSoup from Microsoft. Um, another brand that we do a lot of work with and who have been huge supporters of nonprofits is Adobe. Now, if you are particularly working on nonprofit communications, for instance, maybe you have to design websites or you have to do brochures, pamphlets, some kind of fundraising materials. If you have a communications department or perhaps you work with a designer on staff, then you know about Adobe. Adobe have really pioneered how communications and graphic design can work online. Um, and the product you probably have heard of before is Creative Cloud, which is available through TechSoup. Acrobat Pro DC is another offer which is available te through TechSoup. Creative Cloud provides you with all the digital tools for managing graphics like Adobe Illustrator, InDesign, Photoshop. Acrobat Pro DC is, is sort of like the all bells and whistles version of how you create and manage PDFs. Adobe invented the PDF, so it makes sense that they would have the best platform for being able to edit and control it in every way. Um, but one of the newest offers that I'm actually most excited about from Adobe is called Adobe Express. Adobe Express is sort of a, a simplified version of Creative Cloud. If you've worked in Creative Cloud before, you know that there is some training and education you have to go through to really understand how to use those programs fully. Um, Adobe Express seeks to help people who don't have all that training and education to still be able to produce graphics and communications materials, um, but they have a lot of templates available to you, simplified workloads. And at the moment, Adobe Express is available through TechSoup because Adobe is very generous with nonprofits at no cost to your nonprofit. So if Adobe Express sounds like something you wanna check it out, check it out, it's cool stuff. Um, Another place where TechSoup gets a lot of engagement from nonprofits is with Intuit QuickBooks. Those of us who made it through the pandemic working at a nonprofit know that when it went to the moment that we had to go to a remote distributed workforce, there were some paper and pencil systems that lots of nonprofits were still relying on that suddenly became worse than obsolete. They became absolute blockers to a nonprofit's effort to function. And that was very, very true in the area of finances. We, for years, have advocated that nonprofits move to a digitized financial environment. Adobe QuickBooks is a fantastic platform for nonprofits to conduct and maintain their books on. It's in the cloud. It gives you the ability to know what's going on without having to make sure that you get into the one physical office that has that one notebook where somebody's keeping the ledger on paper with a pen or pencil. QuickBooks is really one of the most popular parts of the TechSoup catalog. And so if your nonprofit is thinking about how to digitize that financial flow of information, I strongly recommend you take a look at Adobe QuickBooks. The QuickBooks Online offer really is where most nonprofits go at this point. There are other versions of QuickBooks available in our catalog as well. I encourage you to take a look at those and see if they can be helpful to your nonprofit. Um, and then as I mentioned, we'll share this deck with you after the presentation. Um, and this FAQ specifically does have some details about QuickBooks that you may well find helpful. There are lots of other brands in the TechSoup catalog. And here I've highlighted just a few more of them. And I'm going to call out one in particular, GrantStation. GrantStation is an online tool that allows nonprofits to search a database of organizations that are accepting non-solicited grant applications. Let me say that again, non-solicited grant applications. 
So what that translates to is usually if a nonprofit is trying to get grant funding, you need to have a relationship with that funder. You need to already be engaged in a conversation with them about what you do, what they are trying to support, and then you make a grant application to them. But there are funders out there who really just are interested in hearing from nonprofits doing work that they fund. And so if you don't have a relationship, GrantStation still allows you to gather the information you need about a grant funder and submit an application to them. There's something like 9,000 different funders in that database. And twice a year, TechSoup runs a very special promotion where you can get that grant station year-long membership. It goes for a whole year. You've got a whole year to do your research and work through the grant station offers. It's a full year's membership for $99. And guess what? Today is day one of one of those promotions. It goes today and tomorrow, and then it will likely repeat in September of this year. But grant station is usually a $699 item. So for these two days, you save an awful lot of money if you go and grab that out of the TechSoup catalog. Um, and if you're a small nonprofit, GrantStation is one of the most popular things we have in the catalog for small nonprofits. So if you're looking to expand your grant funding capacity in the next year, I highly recommend taking a look at GrantStation uh, and seeing if there's something in there that really fits your needs. And I think, uh, yes, thank you. Aretha just dropped the link to GrantStation in the chat. So please go ahead and click on that. Of course, wait till I'm done. No, click on it whenever you want. Go and check out GrantStation. Um, it's a great offer for nonprofits. So as I said, we do more than software though. TechSoup also has access to some great hardware offers for nonprofits. And again, Oh, I see that somebody is getting an error message on GrantStation. Um, it might be that that dash at the end, do you see how it says 3051 dash? Make sure that that dash is in your URL, otherwise it will not work. Um, the hardware offers through TechSoup are again, as I've said, specific for nonprofits and priced accordingly. And we work with a number of big name brands on that front. Um, and we also have refurbished hardware offers. Um, and uh, the major partners we work with are Dell, Lenovo, and HP. Um, and then if you want the refurbished offers, um, there's a whole special place on our catalog um, where you can go to see those refurbished offers. Hey, I'm seeing still some folks in chat having trouble with that grant station link. I, I can tell you that it is really popular in today's day one, I am wondering if maybe our server is getting a little backed up. So I'll make sure that we include that URL in the deck when we send it out. And like I said, uh, it does run today and tomorrow. So don't give up. If you're not able to get in there right now, um, we'll make sure you have the link and tr can try again later. Um, to get to the hardware section of the Grant Station, sorry, to get to the hardware section of the TechSoup website, um, you have to click into the product catalog, which I've highlighted here. That's where my mouse is. And then you go over to hardware here. Um, it's a great design, but not everybody sees that link to hardware there. So I just want to call that off for folks, okay? Um, now, as I mentioned at the front, TechSoup does more than just provide access to software and hardware. In fact, more and more nonprofits are coming to TechSoup because they want access to the services that we provide. And the catalog of services we provide is growing all the time. Let me talk first about how you find the services we offer. So again, on the homepage of the site, there's a services tab there, and you can just drop right down there and pick some stuff. But let's talk about what some of those specifics are, because some of it may be helpful to you right now. We have a help desk service, and the help desk service is $35 monthly. There's an annual version, um, and it's unlimited support for one device. 
So case example I've heard before that I think is a cool way to think about is like, say you've specifically got this printer. Maybe it's been problematic in the past. You could get a help desk subscription to help you just deal with that printer. And there's lots of other hardware examples where that could be. Um, but more often, what folks are really interested in is services from TechSoup to help um, implement and administer complex platforms. So I'll go back to this Microsoft example again, Office 365 or Microsoft 365, as it's now called. Um, when you adopt one of these platforms, there's some backend work that has to happen to configure it for your nonprofit, to move your old email or legacy emails into that new system. So you're not losing your emails. It's just in a new system now. Um, to make sure that the security and administration of that platform is set up correctly, because not all of us are equipped to do a deep dive into configuring a complex platform. So that's a service that TechSoup can now provide. Uh, and in, in fact, in the case of Microsoft 365 specifically, you can now get that through TechSoup and a basic service and support package is automatically included. Um, and at the base level, it's $1 per license per month. $1 per license per month. Very affordable and super helpful if you need help getting Microsoft 365 set up. Um, we can also help with Office standard and professional installation support. Again, if you choose to go that route instead of going the Microsoft 365 route, we also have bigger offers. If you're a medium-sized nonprofit, you might be curious about managed IT. Managed IT is really where you partner with an outside organization to help you manage your whole IT stack. So instead of just like that one printer that gives you trouble or making sure that Office 365 just gets installed, uh, managed IT is a broader suite of services and it happens over time and it's a real partnership. Um, and then finally, the first item in that services catalog is an interesting one. It's called the digital assessment tool. The digital assessment tool is something TechSoup built to help nonprofits assess and understand where their nonprofit is on that journey of digital transformation. It works across several different functional areas of your nonprofit, but let's pick one, for instance, finance, right? The digital assessment tool walks you through a series of questions around how your nonprofit currently deals with finances, you know, with a specific focus on the tech that you use. And it will help you understand if there's a place for your nonprofit to grow, to do better, or maybe you're already doing an A game in terms of how you have digitally transformed your finances. This tool is great, especially if you're an executive director trying to understand where the organization you're running needs to grow, or perhaps you are trying to help your board understand what are some specific things that they can fundraise around. So maybe you can make the argument to board members that, hey, we really need to raise some money so that we can up our game in this particular area or that particular area. The digital assessment tool is a really helpful tool to just understand that lay of the land within your nonprofit. You do have to like sign in and create an account to do the digital assessment tool. It does not cost you money to use the digital assessment tool. Um, another really popular service in the past two years is our foray into websites and digital marketing services for nonprofits. We have a lot of different ways that we engage with nonprofits on that front, um, but we have a consultation and development around your website. Um, there are digital marketing services that we can offer to help nonprofits figure out their email and advertising stack. Um, we're launching a Google ad grant service specifically, um, which is helping nonprofits that use the Google ad grant to maximize that Google ad grant. If you don't know what the Google ad grant is, you should know about it. Essentially, Google will provide nonprofits with up to $10,000 a month in grant funding for you to use their search advertising functions. 
But again, like most things in technology, it's not enough to just get that product. Using it is really the tricky part, and that's where TechSoup can help. Um, that, that brings us to another point here, which is sort of the broader educational mission at TechSoup around the use of technology in nonprofits. Um, and I want to highlight what we call TechSoup courses, also available in the services drop-down menu there. TechSoup courses exists as a standalone website. It's different than the TechSoup.org website. So again, unfortunately, that means you have to set up another login and password account there. And on the courses platform, there's a mix of some courses that cost no money. And there are some advanced courses that do cost a little bit of money. But these courses are all custom developed by TechSoup. They are designed specifically to speak to a nonprofit audience. And they cover a range of topics. Um, a lot of it, stuff that we've already talked about in this presentation. Um, but if you have staff or volunteers who specifically need a little bit of help and coaching around their digital skills, or perhaps you yourself feel like you could use some of that, I, I do all the time. Um, I encourage you to go check out the TechSoup courses site and see if there's some things on there that could help you either move your own body of knowledge forward or some staff and volunteers who need that help as well. Oops, sorry, popped through there. Um, you know, some of the examples of courses available are there's tech planning, there's a whole Microsoft Digital Skills Center in the TechSoup courses platform. You could do something on email marketing or Google Analytics. Um, great resources if those are things that you need. Um, and just a quick, a couple of quick stats on that. Yeah, we've had over 70,000 learners use that platform already. Uh, there is both English and Spanish options for some of those courses, although in, in all honesty, not every course on there is in Spanish, but there are definitely some available options there. As I said, they're all specifically designed for nonprofits. Um, and here's one cool thing. Remember, I was saying that we only serve nonprofits, right? And what that means is when you use our catalog, those products and the hardware we looked at earlier, you have to be a 501c3 to use those offers. And in fact, you have to be authorized to act on behalf of your nonprofit to use those offers. But TechSoup Courses is more open. We let anybody use it because, hey, education is kind of like the beginning level of becoming tech savvy. And so any staff member, volunteer, et cetera, can sign into TechSoup courses and do that. Um, I mentioned the Digital Skills Center from Microsoft. Again, that's a great resource on that digital, on that uh, TechSoup courses platform and worth taking a look at. Um, this is an example of what we call a track on that courses platform. These tracks are a way that we string together multiple specific courses to build a larger piece of awareness here. And so this foundational skills track, you know, walks you through a series of different topical areas, project management, Excel, remote working, fundraising, grant writing, email marketing, it seems like sometimes the list of topics we could study is endless, um, but the foundational skills track is really there to help you get started if you're trying to figure out what's, what's a series that you could just do to bring you up to speed on, on several different things. Um, so with that, I am going to, first of all, beg your forgiveness because I didn't update this slide. It has the wrong name. Um, we're going to be joined instead by Shamira McNeil, who is a customer success manager with TechSoup. And the customer success team at TechSoup is really here to help folks who have chosen to use a product that they've gotten through TechSoup. A lot of it is Microsoft oriented, but it's to help you come up to speed and use that product properly. So if Shamira is there and wants to come off camera, I invite Shamira Ford to welcome our TechSoup attendees today. Take it away. Thank you so much, Nick. Um, as Nick has said, my name is Shamira McNeil. I'm one of the customer success managers on a team with Kevin, who uh, we are on the customer success team together. So I'll be glad to be speaking with you all today to explain a little bit more about Microsoft. 
So for you, those of you joining us, you may not have heard all that the, about the customer success team, but that is completely understandable because we are possibly a year or so um, being uh, made today at uh, TechSoup. So, but before I begin though, I would like to start with a quick poll question. Is your organization currently using Microsoft or Office 365? There's no obligation, of course, to answer. We'll give it about half a minute to fill the results. Right, thank you for those that answered. As you can see, it looks like a lot of people are using Microsoft or Office 365 at their nonprofit organizations currently. That's wonderful, thank you for answering. So um, next slide, please. All right, thank you. On this, I'm sorry, can you go back one slide? Sorry, Nick, I didn't realize you had already switched it, thank you. On this slide, we have a breakdown of pricing between the various 365 subscription types, beginning with web-only offers such as Microsoft Business Basic and Office 365 Enterprise E1. If you have volunteers, for example, you may need licensing for using Microsoft F1 or F3 licensing, which is available specifically for those supporting your organization in that capacity. For the sake of time, however, I won't be diving into this chart, but I do want to know as part of follow-up to what we was just mentioned regarding the web-based subscription licensing. In order to access the traditional offer, sorry, in order to access the traditional office standard or professional plus suite, many of you are likely familiar with in your organization, you would need to request what's called a hybrid license. Some examples of this subscription type are Office 365 E3, Business Standard, Business Premium, and Microsoft Enterprise 3 or 5 offer. I also want to draw quick attention to the last item on the slide, which is Microsoft Azure. Azure, for example, is Microsoft's cloud. For those interested in furthering their use of Microsoft Cloud, there is a 3,500 or 3,500 yearly grant for nonprofits if you are eligible for it. With over 200 different services available as a part of Azure, it is definitely something worth look, looking into. Next slide, please. Okay. For those interested and ready to begin the journey towards, micro, towards accessing Microsoft Cloud solutions for your organization, it is a three-step process. First, you'll need to create an account at the Microsoft nonprofit portal. Next, you'll need to have that account validated. Validation services provided on the back end by TechSoup and Microsoft, so you don't have to worry about that. However, it does take typically about five to seven business days to process it, to process the validation. And then the final part will be introducing what we refer to as the cloud manager or the cloud manager tool. This tool is, um, sorry, is authorized to specific individual accounts. That's why it's very important to make sure you're an authorized agent on your um, nonprofit organization account with TechSoup. The CSP, or the cloud service provider introducing will allow you to access the storefront where you are able to purchase licensing. If you find yourself stuck in any part of the process, we do have a team ready to assist you via the chat as shown in the bottom right corner. Next slide, please. Understanding and move to the cloud can be a challenge for organizations and we do offer free consultation services. During your session with us, we'll be able to assist you with registration, choosing the appropriate, the appropriate subscription licensing and provide recommendations for services and courses, license implementation and ongoing support to you. Okay, next slide, please. As promised, I was going to give a quick overview of what customer success does. For the sake of time, I've broken it down into five general bullets. We're a smaller team dedicated to assisting customers with technology review and planning, organizational strategy, identifying opportunities for potential financial and vendor support and providing quotes and invoices for bulk products requests. Thank you so much again for joining me. So back to you, Nick. Great, thanks Shamira. Um, 
And uh, yeah, I just want to say the customer success team is one of the real gems of TechSoup because, you know, um, not every for-profit technology corporation out there is easy to reach on the phone or via email or chat when you have a question or a problem. But again, going back to this point of TechSoup being a 501c3, we have a social mission. And part of that means that we are available to nonprofits when you have an issue or a question or a problem. And um, that's what Shamira and her team work on. And so thanks for being here and I appreciate your time. Um, next, I want to bring in another wonderful team member. Um, this is Kelly Garrett who is an associate manager of our client services division. Um, and, and before Kelly comes up, I want to explain just like a quick but super important difference. Like what do these two teams do that's different? Kelly's team works with you to help you interact with TechSoup. How to do stuff with TechSoup. Whereas Shamira's team works with you to deal with how do you interact and figure out how to work with a product you've gotten from TechSoup. So that's a, it's an important distinction, but I'll let Kelly go into that in more detail. So Kelly Garrett, come on up. Hi, everybody. Hope everyone's morning or I guess afternoon if you're on the East Coast um, is going well. Um, Thank you for that great introduction, Nick. Um, yes, I am Kelly Garrett. I'm the Associate Manager for Client Services. Uh, client services is basically, um, it's account, uh, we do the account management, and we also provide uh, customer service uh, to our members. So that's anything from how to register, locating a product on the on our website, um, things along those lines uh, is what we assist you with. Uh, we do currently have um, a contact us form, a phone line, and a chat line for you to speak to a person in real time. Um, always going to be a real person when you contact client services at TechSoup. So something to keep in mind, even if you're on chat, it's not a robot, it's us. <laughs> um, next slide, please. Perfect. So one thing that I like to go over with new members, because it's not always obvious, is where to find product information. So you don't have to sit on the phone waiting to get in touch with us. So you don't have to wait for a response to the contact us form you submitted. Um, really want to try to help you all be able to self-serve so that you can get in and get out and get what you need without having to wait around talking to somebody. So when you do locate a product that you are interested in, um, you will click on the product and it will pull up this product page or offer page. And it um, has three different tabs that you'll see are circled right there in red. It's got description, uh, subscription details, rules, eligibilities, and restrictions. And so those three tabs usually cover almost all of the questions that our members have. Um, they can be a little hard to see just because it's gray on white. Um, so it's something to keep an eye out for that there's always gonna be these three tabs of information on every product page. Um, sometimes that middle tab will have a different name. It might say system requirements or subscription, as it says here, subscription details, a couple different versions that we'll have, but you'll always have these three um, tabs and it'll have a ton of information covering, you know, what functionality comes with the product, um, you know, what subscription limitations are there and rules and eligibility is a great place to check for eligibility requirements. Um, since not all or no one organization is going to be eligible for all the offers on TechSoup. Um, our corporate partners like Intuit, who provides QuickBooks Online here, um, and other the other partners we have will um, basically put some eligibility restrictions in. That can be your budget, it can be location, um, it can be what your organization does. It's called an organization type. So if you ever run into something where you're unable to check out, check the messaging. It might be that your organization type, budget, location, et cetera, might not be eligible for that product at this time. Um, but a great place to get started here um, to see, you know, the admin fees listed right there in bright red. Um, you'll see the donor partner listed above it, category, there's platforms. Um, so if it's Windows only, it would say Windows only, things along those lines. Um, so just a great place to get started and highly recommend reading through all of the information before you take that time to uh, contact us. Um, the admin fee, I just saw someone ask, is the admin fee your price? Yes, the admin fee is what TechSoup charges. Um, it's basically what helps keep us going. Um, it pays my salary. It pays for, um, you know, managing the products and the programs. It's always going to be the lowest 
cost on the commercial market. So if you go and check into its website, we will always have the best price for QuickBooks online. And that's compared to any reseller that they work with. It's guaranteed that we have the best offer um, to ensure that our nonprofits are getting ac um, access. Um, this particular product is an annual fee of $75 instead of um, it being a one-time fee. And you'll see that it described again in the product page. If you're like, well, how would I know that? You know, make sure you're reading through the whole thing and you'll be able to uh, see what it says about, is it a perpetual license? Is it a subscription? Is it an access to discounted rates? Which means you pay TechSoup to get access to get a discounted rate from the, directly from the partner. Things like that, really important to make sure you're reading and checking before you check out. Um, most of our products have a no refunds, no exchange policy, um, since we uh, a lot of times can't recoup that license. So it's something to keep in mind that there's a pretty strict no refunds or exchange policy. So make sure you're getting what you need to get before you fully check out and you've provided that payment. Perfect. Um, next slide, please. Um, and I do see someone just asked, is it auto renewal? So some of our products are auto renewal products. Some of them you have to come back and re-request from us by checking out again. And some of the products are, you're actually renewing directly through the donor partner. So for QuickBooks Online, for the plus and advanced versions, that is a donated subscription, meaning the Intuit donated it and they're not asking for any fees from you all. The only fee you have to pay is the admin fee to TechSoup. It's once a year and it will be an automatic renewal. And with automatic renewals, we automatically put a request on your TechSoup account 30 days before the renewal is due. And at that time, you can either edit payment, cancel the request, or add payment if you didn't opt in to save your payment from the year before. So QuickBooks Online's auto renewal, you're always going to renew through TechSoup. And that can vary between different partners, you know, Intuit and Adobe are not connected. They're not the same company. So they're going to have different policies, different eligibility. So it's something to keep in mind that, you know, each program is going to have their own eligibility, their own renewal process, their own products, all that good stuff. Um, so if you do need any help, we've actually been going through a massive overhaul of our FAQ and help support pages. So we're really making it much more robust and trying to make sure we're hitting all the top, um, all the top uh, questions and things like that. So if you ever need support, um, I do also recommend if you're not seeing anything on a product page or in any, you know, kind of poking around the website, going to that help section, which is listed in the top right corner next to where you log in is help. And then you'll be able to come in here and you'll see that there's some contact information listed there. We've also got some help topics that are popular. Um, a great place to check your eligibility is you'll see um, it says check your organization's eligibility. It's like one of the first options right there. And we actually have a little quiz. And if you're logged in already, it will just automatically tell you what you're eligible for and give you a list of all the programs you can access. Um, so great place to start is here. I'm also clicking that FAQ tab. So that's the top there. Right now we're on the, uh, the screenshot showing help topics. If you clicked on the blue side that said frequently asked uh, questions, it would pull up the FAQ for you. So a great place to go. Um, so yes, and once uh, so once you're here, this is where you can kind of navigate. Um, and I do see I see someone's asking about ineligibility um, for professional organizations. Um, if you do require any support for your, you know, why am I ineligible? I want to talk to somebody about stuff. That's when you want to maybe use. Um, you're going to want to contact uh, client services. Um, and this next slide is going to show you how to do that. So next slide, please. So this is our contact us page. Um, this is where you can fill out the form to uh, send in a con like just basically you're letting us know what you're interested in, what issue you have, and then uh, client services will respond. Usually we're aiming for three to five business days to respond to that form inquiry. Um, but right now we are experiencing extremely high volumes due to the new year. Um, we usually have everybody kind of rush in at the same time, especially when it you know, tax season coming up and things like that. So if you're looking for a quick response, I highly recommend using our chat feature, which is in the bottom right corner of most pages. You'll see it's outlined there in the screenshot. Um, that is going to a real person. You will get some automated messaging first. It says, you know, hey, thanks for waiting for us. We'll be with you in a second. Here's some FAQ links. But you will be talking to a real person that's not a robot. Um, some of our members sometimes 
think that it is a robot. It's not, it's a real person. Um, you can also call us. We have been experiencing long wait times for calls, but it is another option. And you'll see it's listed there calling customer service. Um, one thing to keep in mind is because we are very um, backlogged right now and getting a ton of contacts is our phone line is now open from uh, Monday to Wednesday. It's gonna be closed Thursday and Friday. So Monday through Wednesday, you're gonna have a phone line available. Thursdays and Fridays, it's gonna be closed. That just started this week. Um, and we hope to open it back up to the full business week in the future. But right now, we just want to make sure we're getting everybody. And that includes, you know, emails and things like that. So um, perfect. Next slide, please. Perfect. So um, right now, it says Monday through Friday. That changed this morning. It's going to be Mon um, for phones. It's Monday through Wednesday. And you'll see our phone number is listed right there. Um, I highly recommend making sure you're calling this number. If you call our front desk, because Google likes to show our front desk phone number, it's going to take us a couple business days to receive your voice message because it kind of goes around the company and it takes a minute for someone to send it over to us. So make sure you're calling that 1-800 number. The 7 a.m. to 12 p.m. time is still accurate. It will be from Monday through Wednesday. Chat support still will be available from Monday through Friday. We tend to be available from 7 a.m. to 4 p.m. Pacific time. Uh, we are located on the West Coast, so everything's Pacific time usually for us. And as I mentioned, the contact or uh, submissions, usually three to five business days. We are not in the office on Saturdays and Sundays, but you know it might take up to 10 business days right now because we're experiencing a ton of contacts. So appreciate your patience if you're getting in touch with us. And again, chat's probably the fastest way to get in touch with us if you've got something urgent or you want to get an answer real quick. Um, something to keep in mind with client services is we can assist you with your tech soup account management, like what your qualification status is, eligibility questions, you know, navigating the products on techsoup.org. What we're not trained to provide is IT support. Um, client services is just customer, customer service and account management. Uh, we do not provide product support like download, installation. Um, if you've got really in-depth functionality questions about a product, that's not something we can assist with. Uh, so usually we let you know, hey, why don't you go to the partner that created it? So if you were having issues with your QuickBooks online, we'd have you contact Intuit and Intuit's representatives could assist you. Since these are the same products available on the commercial market, it's not like they're creating something special for these programs. They're just basically discounting or donating the same exact product. So their representatives can usually assist you um, with working through things. And then of course we have that wonderful service help desk that Nick mentioned earlier. Um, great place to go that where we've partnered with folks to fill that gap of support. Um, low cost, very effective. And if you, for any reason you don't use it, you can always return that one. That one's a a refundable product. If you don't use it, we can always confirm you didn't use the service. So, you know, help desk, I usually recommend my, uh, members I work with to really check that out because it's a great service for anybody that's not tech savvy or wants someone else to install it. Um, things along those lines, great option. Um, and then, yeah, one last shout out to Grant Station. Just a reminder that it does, the promotion started at 6 a.m. this morning and it's ending at 5 p.m. Pacific time tomorrow. So if you try to check out with Grant Station at 6 p.m. Pacific time tomorrow, you're not gonna be able to. So remember there's a 5 p.m. Pacific deadline and you can access that by just typing in Grant Station into our search bar on techsoup.org or you can always go to the product catalog and use that donor or company drop down to select Grant Station. Perfect, and that is all I've got. Great. Thank you very much, Kelly. Thank you, Shamira. And thank you, everyone who joined the webinar today. And I just want to leave you with a reminder that the point of TechSoup, again, here is to be very mission driven. Um, we are here to serve nonprofits. We think that technology can play an extremely powerful role in your own mission delivery to the populations that you serve, whatever that mission may be. Um, and, uh, you know, most of the folks who joined us today are U.S. based, um, but I don't want to actually forget to, to remind folks that TechSoup is also a global network. And, and what that means is that we are active around the world and operate in most countries around the world with NGOs in those countries as well, um, NGOs being non-governmental organizations, because 
you know, in other countries, they're not necessarily called 501c3s. They're not necessarily called nonprofits. Some places they're called charities. There are lots of names for it. Um, but we do take a very holistic view, again, of what civil society is. It's, it's you. It's the people who've chosen to work, to try to make the world a better place every day. Um, and we think we can help you. We think technology can help you. Um, and so if you want to reach out because you need help, please don't hesitate to do so. As I said, we'll share uh, the recording of this webinar uh, as well as the slide deck um, with you after the fact. Um, and uh, really appreciate your time and attention today. I know you're all busy people and have plenty to do. Um, and uh, thanks for making TechSoup part of that today. So have a wonderful day. Bye-bye.